Well, hey everybody, Jen from Jekyll Bates, and it is another spray session session. Does that even sound right? Yeah, I guess so. Anyways, I get a lot of questions uh, all the time asking about this particular type of mesh fabric. Uh, this is a uh, Darcine, I believe that's how you pronounce it, D-A-R-C-I-N-E. And it is a metal mesh fabric, usually found in crafts. And you can find it a couple of different places. I've got a link below in the description uh, for where I purchase it from. I get it from Amazon and it's relatively inexpensive and Amazon gets it to you pretty quick. Um, you can also look for it in your local like Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, any place that sells fabrics and you may find it there as well. Um, but I know for sure you can get it offline on Amazon. So there is a link in the description below. and. What we're going to be doing today is a Lake Martin Red. It's a very simple pattern. Um, this is the first time that I've actually done this particular style mesh on camera. Um, get questions all the time, um, but it's pretty easy. It's, it's, it's not a big secret. Um, a lot of folks are getting this mesh and it looks really, really good, but I'm going to show you how to make it a very cool pattern today. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint this entire thing black. Now I have told you guys in the past, you don't always have to use white as a prime coat you can use black as well very effective and it gives a really cool veining effect specifically with this pattern so that's what we're going to go ahead and do i'm going to load a black opaque the wicked detail black is going to go into the chamber just going to put enough in the chamber to cover the entire bait and then you'll see what happens from there Using the Awada Eclipse, this is the HPCS. It is a very standard brush, but it's, I would say it's not the highest, it's not the lowest end. It is a workhorse among workhorses in airbrushing. So this is a favorite of many professionals and amateurs alike, whether you're a hobbyist or whether you do it for a living like I do. Um, just a trooper. I've had this for three years, three plus. No issues, no problems. Uh, the only thing that I do is occasionally I'll change the needle uh, from my 0.5 that I use. Oh, that's my everyday base coats, primers, basic layering, blending. And then for my uh, detailing needle, I'll use a 0.25. Some people use a 3 or 3.5, 3 0.35. I like something that's a little bit more fine that kind of atomizes faster. It's a little bit more advanced, but once you teach yourself how to use it and you understand the pressure that, uh, that you want to give into your brush and reducing and all the stuff that goes along with that, you'll be better off, I think, in my opinion, with, uh, with the better detailing needle. But we have a .5 in there right now. Just going to spray this completely and uh, get it. That's it. Well, you can really tell the difference between the, the thinner or the more detailed needles and this big 0.5. Um, I, I like the thinner ones better. Sometimes I even apply base coats with the, uh, the detailing needle. Don't tell anybody. So we're going to heat set this off camera. We're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to apply this with alligator clips and what we're going to do next. All right, I have heat set this off camera. It's good and dry to the touch. We can now add our mesh and our detailing. And I also went ahead off camera. I had to switch it back from the 0.5. It's, to be honest, it's been a very long time since I've used the, the normal primer coat. And I just, you know, I kind of wanted to see, um, I, to be honest, I, I just don't, I can't even use something that, that fat anymore. I, I went back to my 0.25 for detailing and all the guides are going to tell you that you really it takes a lot more effort to put a primer coat on with a detailing needle but um, the the base coat needle the 0.5 pretty much just blows paint all over your bait 
Um, and, I, and I guarantee you, if you're not using a detailing needle when you're trying to do some, some more advanced type of things, even with the stenciling that we did in the last upload, that's one of the reasons that you're probably having difficulty putting on detail and, and having it look like doo-doo. So try getting a, a, a thinner detailing needle, like a 0.25, um, or a 0.35 or 0.30, whatever you can find. Iwata has got a pretty pretty comprehensive guide out there. So just, just get that detailing needle. It's going to make a world of difference for you guys. I'm going to leave a, a link in the description below on where you guys can pick that up. Um, but anyways, I've got my detailing needle back in my airbrush. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put some of this stuff off to the side actually going to do a couple of different videos today because I have a little bit of extra time on my hands and I'm getting ready to leave and uh, visit family and go to the East Coast and see the Bass Elites and all that good stuff on the Potomac coming up. So I'm not going to be in the studio in the workshop for a couple of weeks. I want to make sure you guys get the content that you deserve. So we now have this wire metal mesh and it is flexible. It moves on you and you can reuse it. I, I usually get it probably six or seven uses before I have to toss it out. You can put it on and what I normally do is I hook that back eyelet just like I do with everything else. Get your alligator clips out and secure it. Just leave that pen right there. And just kind of pull that down. You don't want to pull too, too hard because it will tear just like your scale netting. But you do kind of want to make sure that you have this on to where it's going to form a fairly tight seal onto this bait. And we're going to take two clips and just kind of pinch off the bill. And then with this in place, I'm going to bring my other hand around. We're going to kind of pull up, gather up all that extra get it fairly tight and then bring your hand back hold your hand in place grab another alligator clip and we're going to do this all the way down the belly of the bait we are using a rattling 2.5 on this it's actually an order for a customer so he'll get the benefit of seeing what I'm doing with his bait we just want to gather all that stuff up Keep doing that. Just keep your keep a firm grip on this mesh as you work your way down the back of the bait. Just make sure that you have that tight seal. Now one other tip depending on how you want this veining to look, you can either use a single layer, pull it off in a sheet about like this, or what I normally do is I take this and I fold it over itself and now you've doubled up. And this is normally how I apply it. So I've seen it applied like this. And I've seen it applied like this. And I, to be honest, I really like it when it's doubled over. And it will fit most baits. You can do it lengthwise for a longer jerk bait this way. Or you can stick it on up to a 2.5 when you have about this much material. And you're looking at about probably 8 or 9 inches. Maybe a little bit less if you look at it but that will get you coverage on most of your baits out there. And going back to this, we're just about done with it. Uh, normally, if I'm doing a bunch of these in a row, I'll take some scissors and cut off this excess because you really don't need to uh, keep that there. But if I want a couple more uses out of it, if I want to maybe put it on a jerk bait later, I'll just pull that, twist it up, just about done. Take this last bunch that we've gathered and twisted and that should do it. Maybe one more up front on the throat. Make sure you got both if you're gonna fold it over itself. 
and you're going to look just like this when you're ready to apply. And the next question that I get is, if you're using a black primer and you want to apply color to this bait, which we're going to do, how in the world do you keep the black from absorbing and sucking all that cool color into it? Very simple, opaque white. Because remember, we've already got this down. This is going to create the veins in black. So we're going to take a very thin layer of opaque white, give that a little bit of a shake, Make sure we don't have any gunk on the top, and I do, a little bit. Always remember to clean that off. I know I preach it, but it's true. Keeps your air brush, brush from clogging up. Just enough to cover it. We're gonna keep it a distance away, at least six inches off of this bait. Remember, black absorbs, white reflects. So if you add, there we go. If you add white to your black prime bait, it will cover it. All right, that should be enough. Just kind of get every last little bit that we can out of this chamber. There you have it. And we're going to heat set that off camera, and then we're going to apply our first color. This is going to be a Lake Martin Red, which means, um, if, if you guys watch Bassmaster Elites, which I do religiously, I, I like to see what's coming out and what's working so that I can give my clients what they may or may not know they need. It's going to have a very fluorescent bright yellow on the, on the belly, fading up to an orangish fluorescent red and then a deeper red and a little bit of black here. It's a very simple pattern but just to show you how to effectively use this mesh that's the pattern we're going to do today for you. I've cleaned the chamber. I've given this a quick heat set dry to the touch. We now have white over top of our black base coat which has got the uh, the mesh wiring over top of that and I'm going to add a little bit of fluorescent yellow into this. Just enough to get the belly done. Very little bit of paint in the chamber at all. That's perfectly fine if you coat a little bit of extra because orange and red are complementary colors to yellow. If you guys go back to the, uh, the color wheel video that we just put out, yellow is a primary color. There are shades of yellow. You can incorporate some white, some blues, some whatever you want to do to achieve whatever shade of yellow you want. Even black to make it darker. but you don't have to spend a whole ton of time cleaning the chamber out, just enough to make sure there's no clogs in there. We're going to add just a little bit of tangerine orange. Not much, not much at all because we want to come back quickly. Just do the nose, go down the do I have a clog? I might. You can, if you have a clog and you just want to go ahead and breeze through the color that you have left in your chamber, a lot of times what I'll do, and I get clogs, just like you guys, I'll put my finger over the tip and I'll push, and that's enough to get that clog out of the way to finish this color, and that's what that's allowed me to do. Now I've got that orange, I've got the yellow on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and blow this out and get that whatever kind of clog is there. I'm almost to the bottom of this tangerine pearlized orange. So I'm certain that that's one of the reasons. I'm sure I've just got a little bit of debris or clog or clump, whatever it is, in the bottom of this tube. Oh yeah, that's, that's a big old clot. 
Wow. Yep, that's exactly what that was. Sorry about that. Hadn't really planned on cleaning the chamber right just then, but left me no choice. There really is not enough left in here to strain this through. Um, I'll just suffer with it. This is a fluorescent red, very bright red. And we're gonna keep gradually going up while this is still wet. It, it's so bright of a fluorescent that it almost looks pink, but it's not. It's a red. Let's see, there we go, fluorescent red. Now the last video I, I just shot, just the other day, I was having some issues with it. I shot it in 2K, which is a very good um, frame per second, and it usually looks really good, and the colors are true colors, but came out all jacked up. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's uh, the version, so I re-uploaded it in a standard high definition version encoded it that way and I'm still having complaints um, as of late the color is going in and out of these videos and I'm really hoping that it's not the iris in this GoPro 4 which is what I normally use to record because I like to give you the perspective as if you're the one that's airbrushing instead of having a camera behind me because I really want you to see as close up to the bait as you can what's going on in the video. I usually keep my framing on medium and then just try and get the, the field of vision just in the immediate area of what I'm working on. Um, but yeah, I'm having issues with color and I know it's not a lighting problem. I've, I've addressed the lighting. There's plenty of lighting in the videos. I've, I've looked at it in various different formats between laptop and a PC and uh, various different types of smartphones, Androids, iOS systems. So it isn't that. Um, so it is a little bit concerning, and if that happens to the rest of the videos, my apologies. I will try and get another GoPro as soon as possible, but this is uh, the, the last GoPro I had. The underwater housing did not stay waterproof, so I have recently lost a, uh, a GoPro, and that's critical to filming. And because I'm not made of a million dollars, it takes a little bit of, uh, of selling in business to get these things replaced. So that's what the dealio is, folks. And I apologize if the colors suck. Uh, I'm doing the very best that I can. So it's okay to be mad at me, but please try not to be. We are ready for a little bit darker. And I'm not going to put that regular transparent bright red on this because I already have plenty of color in this. I don't want to just oversaturate this bait, but I do want a little bit of darker red definition up top. So while this bait's still wet, we're adding, we, the only thing that we heat set was the original black and then the white once the mesh got on there, which is what you want. Then we're gonna add just a little bit of deep red. Most of these, if not all of them, except for the black are the actual Createx line. The Wicked is the detail black, which is also a Createx color. It's just a little bit more of an advanced paint. And you can see, just a transformation and we just want that I don't want it all over the bait but I do want it on the nose now at this point before we put any more black into it I'm gonna quick heat set this and then we're gonna give it that 3d effect I'm gonna lay this bait onto its side like I've done in previous videos with other types of materials and we're gonna get that 3d effect and it's gonna look super super cool so sit tight I'll be right back Heat set is now complete. It's a little bit tacky and that's just what we want it because we want this black to cling to the paint so it can be a little bit tacky. You don't want to over dry it. Um, now we're gonna lay this bait down. You can see that I've got it at a 90 degree angle, almost perpendicular um, to the surface that I'm spraying on. And we're gonna bring this brush in at a very low angle and spray across the top of this bait, just like this. Just kind of lift it up as we go back. And do that with the nose. 
Just kind of bring this over and do the exact same thing on the other side. You don't want to blow the paint. You still want to be able to see that red and the yellow. You want to be able to see everything that's on there. Now we're going to go and just a little bit on the bottom because you really don't want to take much away from the fluorescence on the bottom. You still want that bright fluorescent. I'm going to leave that black in there for now. We're going to heat set this and I'm going to pull this off and show you what the bait looks like. One of the reasons it's such a pain in the butt to go ahead and show you the heat set is that I have to walk all the way out in the kitchen. That's like the million dollar question. I get asked that all the time. Jen, why is there a, a, a heat dryer and a, and a hair dryer, heat gun, in your kitchen? Well, my shop is set up in a modified garage. The only thing that's not modified is the circuit breaker. So unfortunately, every time I heat set when I'm running my ventilation system, blows the circuit. So that, folks, is why Crevasse's heat gun is in her kitchen. Now you can, <laughs> this is already starting to look super cool. Look at the veining and the detail. It's almost like ripping off a, a band-aid because this will fuse a little bit because you've had paint move around a little bit. So we just kind of pull it apart just like you're doing a band-aid. Pull that out. Do the same thing with the top, just pull it off quick. This is your Lake Martin Red. That bright fluorescent on the belly fades up and we can we can also if you want that fluorescent you can kind of cover this you don't have to lay down white because you already have a little bit of a fine white opaque mist on the bottom of this so I think for the purposes of this we're gonna leave it as is but remember you can bring a little bit more fluorescent yellow if you want to keep maintain that that pop on the bottom of the bait There you have it. Now, I do have black in the chamber, and you can also see, at least I hope you can, this 3D effect. You can see it's dark, but then you have that orange pop in there. Just a, a real neat effect for these baits. I am going to do a little bit of shading in the eyes. And that's set way too high. We want to bring our, anytime we're doing some accenting, you want to pull that pressure back just a little bit. But you definitely don't. That's one of the biggest things to, to teach yourself is to have patience and take some time. And there you have it. You got your shaded eyes. And we're going to set the eyes into that. Ladies and gents, there's your Lake Martin Red. Takahiro's winning color pattern, Lake Martin this year. Have added the black eyes in, we're ready to clear coat. On this one, I'm not gonna show you the clear coat. We've shown it to you a bunch of times on this channel. So you can reference the previous video if you wanna see some clear coating and how to dip. I use KBS, but uh, you're very effective, simple, elegant pattern in a Lake Martin Red. You guys, thanks for hanging out. Until the next time, happy casting, and I'll see you on the water.